All right, welcome to today's Tech Talk Tuesday. For today's topic, we're gonna to talk about the cooling system on the Dodge Viper, specifically the Gen 2 Vipers, which cover from 1996 to 2002. A lot of these upgrades that I'm gonna discuss here in this video are applicable to the earlier Gen 1 cars, the 92 to 95 cars, as well as the newer cars from 2003 to present. So if you're familiar with the Gen 2 Vipers, you know that in warmer climates, they can tend to run on the warmer side. And so here are a few things that you can do to upgrade your cooling system on your car to make it run more efficient and keep those engine temps down and out of the red zone. And a lot of these that I'm, tips that I'm gonna talk about here, I've actually incorporated into my 96 already and saw a huge improvement. So they are highly recommended that you make these upgrades uh, to your car as well. So the first thing I recommend to upgrade on your cooling system, your Dodge Viper, is to add a fan control module. And Road Racing makes an excellent product. I've got it installed on my 96, and I'll include a link in the description below if you wanna check it out. And it splices into the existing harness, and what it does is it adds a probe into the radiator for the temperature, and it has a control module that allows you to set what temperature range the fan is running at. So you can have it come on at a lower temperature than what it normally does and stay on longer so that way after you shut the engine off, it'll continue to cycle the coolant through the engine and cool it down faster. And they're a great product. They're really easy to install. The instructions that come with are really clear. And so I highly recommend that you add one of those to your car. So the second thing I recommend to that you upgrade your cooling system is really only applicable to the earlier cars, I believe pre-98 and that's to replace the cooling fan itself. And the reason I say that is around 98 timeframe, Dodge made an upgrade to the cooling fan and it made a huge improvement on the cooling capacity for the radiator. And so what they did was on the earlier cars, the fan was a little smaller and offset. And so it's a dead giveaway if your car's already been upgraded or not. And the replacement from the later cars uh, from the 98 to 2002, it's literally a drop in, the, the wiring harness is the same, so it's a plug and play conversion, and it's located in the center and it's got a larger fan, and so it pulls more air through, plus being located in the center versus offset, it's more efficient on pulling that air through. So the only problem is though, uh, I believe that fan has been discontinued, so Finding one may be a bit of a challenge. You may have to find one through a wrecker or maybe go with a different aftermarket fan altogether. The downside with an aftermarket fan is uh, mounting as well as the wiring is gonna be require some custom work done. Uh, should, it's not necessarily a difficult task to do, but it's definitely more involved than just swapping out and plugging in. From there, the next recommendation is more for a safety standpoint as the rubber hoses on these cars are now approaching 20 plus years old. And so if you're running the original rubber hoses, they're probably getting soft and expanding. And so you might wanna consider replacing the radiator hoses with silicone units. And Mishimoto makes a great set of silicone radiator hoses. They also make a set of silicone heater hoses as well. And I've got them both on my car and they're a great product. They're easy to install. And so I'll include links to them in the description below for those as well, if you're interested in upgrading those on your vehicle. And so they also come in a, uh, a few different colors, I believe red and black uh, and maybe blue. Um, so go ahead and check those out. Definitely recommend replacing radiator hoses on the car, especially if they're the original ones, because at this point being 20 plus years old, they could be just a ticking time bomb before they rupture and last thing you want to do is be stuck on the side of the road with a ruptured hose and trying to find a replacement hose for a Dodge Viper. The next thing from there is replacing the radiator itself and this is a little more involved uh, pulling the radiator out of the car. Uh, some people recommend pulling the hood off the car to be able to get it out. Uh, we were able to replace the radiator on this one without pulling the hood. Uh, it wasn't that much of a challenge but having a second set of hands uh, with the project made it go a lot smoother. Um, so anybody tells you you have to pull the hood off in order to replace the radiator on the Vipers, don't listen to them. It can definitely be done without too much hassle with leaving the hood on the car. All right, so now that the radiator's out of the car, it's decision time. Do you A, replace it with a aftermarket aluminum radiator, which there are several on the market to choose from, or B, have the stock brass copper radiator record with a higher capacity core? And they're both pros and cons to either one. 
For the aluminum radiator, the benefits are the aluminum is stronger than the copper brass core is, and so it tends to be more durable. And there are several aftermarket ones to choose from, and so you can have one actually in stock at your place before you actually tear the car apart. So just swap one in and the other one out, and so the install goes a lot faster. Um, the downside is it doesn't look stock. Uh, even if you paint them, you're still gonna be able to tell that it's an aluminum radiator versus is the original copper brass radiator just by the general shapes of the tanks and things like that. And the cooling capacity isn't quite as good on the aluminum radiators as they are on the copper brass. Now, what I ended up doing was having the stock copper brass radiator record. And the reason I did that was uh, I wasn't concerned about the durability as there's an AC condenser in front of the radiator to help protect it from road debris flying up and puncturing the radiator and being able to retain the stock appearance of the original copper brass was important on me for being a 96. And so I ended up going that route, plus talking to my radiator guy, he said that there's probably gonna be about a 30 to 35% increase in cooling capacity going the copper brass route versus going the aluminum route. Um, the other downside though, with having the larger core stuffed in that radiator was one, it made the cost a little higher from ordering a aftermarket aluminum radiator, and two, it made it a little tighter fit going back into the car, um, but everything still fit uh, just fine. It was just a little snugger during the install. So it really boils down to personal preference, which way you wanna go. Um, most people go with an aluminum aftermarket radiator, and um, I can't fault them for that at all. Um, it makes it a lot easier from having, being able to order the parts in advance and having them already there. And it's pretty commonplace now to just upgrade to an aluminum radiator. Um, but for me, it was worth taking the extra time and spending a little extra money to get the larger capacity core put into the stock copper brass radiator. So one more thing you can do, which is a little more involved uh, from an install standpoint, is replace the thermostat. And from the factory, they come with a 195 degree Fahrenheit thermostat, and you can replace that with a 180 degree Fahrenheit thermostat, which will help bring the temperatures down the car as it gets the coolant flowing through the radiator at a lower temperature. So this one's a little more involved because you actually have to take the intake manifold off, and that can be a pain. And so luckily for me, it was already done on my car, so I didn't have to worry about that part but um, it's one of those areas that you can go and replace a single part to help bring those temperatures down for when you're cruising or stuck in traffic on a hot summer day. So now this goes into the last upgrade that you can do, which I haven't done on mine, uh, mostly because the amount of effort to do it was more than I wanted to deal with. And with all the other upgrades that I've done to this point, I didn't feel it was really necessary because the car runs so much cooler. And that is to replace the factory coolant with Evans coolant. And Evans coolant is a great product. Um, I have friends that have swapped it out on their cars and it, they absolutely swear by it. And the cooling differences that they've seen has been absolutely huge. Um, but in order to install the Evans coolant, you have to completely drain all the original coolant out of your car. There can't be any remnants left because it interacts with the Evans. And so that was why I didn't do it on mine because I didn't want to go through and have to worry about flushing the system multiple times to make sure I get all of the old coolant out before I put the new coolant in. Um, so it's really up to you if you want to go that extreme. Um, like I said, a lot of people have had great success with it. It's a high quality product. Um, I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below for that as well. All right, so those are all the tips I have for how to increase the cooling efficiency of your Dodge Viper, uh, specifically the Gen 2 Vipers. And so if you liked today's video, go ahead and hit that like button down below. And as always, if you wanna be kept up to date on my latest videos and don't wanna miss a single one of my uploads, hit that subscribe button down below and ring that notification bell. And I will see you the next video.